Hello YouTubers, today we're talking about brakes again, brakes and track rod ends. Um, obviously I've shown you how to um, show me other videos how your brakes are gone. Normally you can tell anyway because obviously your pedal feels spongy, you might be able to physically see your brakes are warm, so there's a few different ways. But what I want to uh, really concentrate on today is how to find out if a track rod end is warm. Now this track rod end is gone on this side. It's always best to replace both sides. The other side hasn't necessarily done, but this side is gone, so that the other side isn't far away. So you're best off replacing both at once. And basically, the way to do it, hold the wheel. Obviously, all the bolts are still on. I don't know if you can see that, but there's a rock. Hopefully, it's coming through camera. There's a rock on the wheel. That wheel shouldn't be rocking. It's rocking up and down and side to side. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that the ball joint is gone. It's easy with two people, one person rocks it, the other person goes underneath and you can physically see things moving because a rock on the steering also could mean your bottom ball joint's gone, it could mean your bearing's gone, it means a few different things but um, the rock on the wheel shouldn't be there and obviously it goes without saying brakes have to be done both sides. The amount of people that come to me and ask me to do brakes on one side, it's just ridiculous. I won't do it, shouldn't be done, it's just too dangerous. So I'm going to take off the wheel, turn the camera back on, we'll see the brakes, we'll take the brakes off, do all that. Let's crack on with it. Okay, so we have the wheel off, obviously, discs, pads, track rod end is up here, I don't know if you can just see it just off camera. This is the type of track rod end it is, we'll get to that in a bit. First thing you want to do, and I always forget this, is take, if you've got any bolts or screws holding the disc on, take them off first. Because once you take the caliper and stuff off, it can be a lot harder to do. Now, Phillips screwdriver. These can be loose. That one happens to be loose. And so does that one. Now, if there wasn't, get a screwdriver that you can physically hit at the back that won't break the screwdriver. That's important. You put it in. A couple of hits with a hammer. And if it was tight, that would loosen it up. Now, once you've kept all the caliper and stuff on, you can actually wedge the, the disc, because sometimes the disc likes to move, so you, you can't unscrew this. So wedge the disc with a screwdriver, wedged against the caliper, and then if these were tight, they would be a lot easier to take off. See, good tip, good tip. So, simple enough. Next thing we wanna do, is push back the piston. Now, you want to make sure, especially when you're doing back pistons, you haven't got a wind back piston because you'll never push it back. you also got to be careful, depending on what car you've got, the push button handbrakes, you need a computer to tell you to go back. But this is a front disc, or front caliper on a car, so we should have no problem in just getting something, and I only have this to hand, um, screwdrivers or anything like that, and you can literally wedge it in here, push back piston. Now don't be afraid because obviously we're replacing we're replacing the pads, we're replacing everything so even if you damage the pads it doesn't really matter. Sometimes what you have to do is get a screwdriver and you can uh, hammer the screwdriver into the pad and you can just pull it back. This just makes life a lot simpler. It means you don't have to bleed the brakes, you don't have to do anything, you just push it back Simple, put the new pads in and it's obviously pumped the brake. You don't have to do any bleeding, there's nothing at all that's going to cause you a problem. So, I've now made it space. I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but that's going back. Now, that piston is back. Simple. Can't do the little squeak noise at the end. So now what we've got to do is take the piston off, or the caliper. 12 mil, now obviously different cars, different sizes. Two bolts. Just crack them both. So make sure you loosen them both before you take any one of them off. I 
and this will come off. As we can see, the piston's back. Hopefully, you can see that. Move that way for the minute. Now, these pads very worn, very thin. But not only that, the actual disc, big lip on the disc, very rusty. So, with it being a big Jeep, you know, you want to replace them because what, what's, what most people think is the bigger vehicle, or the brakes are bigger, they're going to last longer. It's not the case. Bigger vehicle, heavier vehicle, brakes won't last as long. That's how it works, unfortunately, not the other way around. Now, what you want to do is you want to make sure on your carrier that these two are loose. And as we can see, this one is loose. In and out, this one is seized. Now, it's a good thing actually that this one seized. So I can show you basically how to solve that. So it's not actually too badly seized to be fair, but it's spinning now. So I need to pull it out. This is the good one. As you can see, there's a bit of grease on it. What this allows you to do is as the caliper, as the piston and the caliper is moving, this allows the piston to move, the caliper to move in and out. If these are seized, it won't break properly. So it's not a good thing. So we need to pull this out. And typical, it won't come out. Put some pliers on it. Now, some vice grips. Let's make that a bit tighter. of that. This does not want to come out. Now I'm going to just wrap a rag around it because the vibrations when I'm hitting it, it's coming through my hand and it's not nice. Now nah. it's out. Best thing to do, wire brush, clean it with a wire brush, get all this crud off. It's compacted grease over the years that has done it. Clean it off, fresh grease, Put it back in, Bob's your uncle. Sorted. Right, next thing, we need to take off the carrier. Two bolts behind. Maybe 15 or something. Yep, two bolts behind, 15 mil. Sorted. 
hats off. Wire brush, clean all inside there. Clean inside here as well, where the actual pad sits. Some sometimes you, you get new clips. If you get new clips, put them on. If you don't, just clean them up. Put a bit of copper grease inside as well, which I'll show you that later as well. And then that's it. Now this disc will come off. Disc. So, that's pads and discs. I'm going to put these back on first and then I'm going to do the uh, track on end. Before I do that, I'm just going to clean all this, put grease on, because you want to do that now before you forget and you don't want to lose them or anything. So I'm going to do that, turn the camera back on when I'm ready to shove everything back in. Right, so we have our new disc. When you get a new disc, you have to uh, get some brake cleaner on it because what happens is it comes with this kind of uh, oil over it to stop it from rusting because these will rust really quickly. So you also want to match it up with your old disc, make sure it's the right height, right thickness, this part is right, the holes line up. Once you've done that, it's just literally a case, line up the holes. And don't forget, you need to line up the two little holes for the screws as well. Like I said, some, some discs don't have this, some discs do. It just depends on the type of car. Some have one, some have two, some have none. These don't need to be tight. They're just there to hold the disc. Once, if these wasn't on, once you put the wheel on, they hold the disc anyway. So it just makes it a little bit easier for you to put the pads on, but they're not really that crucial. But if they're there, you might as well shove them on. So just a nice pinch. Now, this is a carrier. And as you remember, one of these was seized before. Oh, so, so that one is okay. And this one, as you can now see, is nice and free. So, that's good. Line that back up. So once you've lined it up, obviously you need to tighten it. You don't want to be tightening this with an air gun. You just don't know how tight you've got it or how tight you haven't got it, if it's the case maybe. So you always want to tighten it with a ratchet. Well, I do because it just gives you that much more feeling. thing you want to do is don't be tempted to rip open your box cheeky um, because if they're wrong if the box is completely ripped they won't take them back same with your discs so open the boxes carefully just in case they're wrong because it does happen then you'll be able to send them back and replace them see look at all the good tips you're learning here. <laughs> Next thing you want to do is obviously line them up, make sure they're the same width, everything works, you know, the same height, same shape. Then we need to uh, grease these babies up to put them in. The way I like to do it is just do the edges first, leave the middle blank. I see a lot of people just paste this stuff on and when you try and put it in your fingers are in the way so your fingers can get covered with grease then you can accidentally put grease on here which obviously is the last place you want it so I always just like just to put the grease in where it sits once it's in then put the grease on 
It's a lot neater. And grease doesn't go everywhere. So once on like that, then you can put the grease in the middle. Copper grease. You need to make sure it's copper grease. Stops from squealing, it's heat resistant and all that. It's good stuff. For simple case, lining this back up. Making sure it's in. Two little screws or bolts at the top. Line it up. Sometimes you take a bit of a wiggle. Now again, I don't like tightening the caliper bolts with a ratchet because you can over tighten them and you definitely don't want to go near them with an air gun. Now these obviously have to be tight but you can over tighten these, you know, they're only going into that little bar we freed up. You can easily break the threads and then you're going to be in trouble. So a spanner. nice nip on it, you won't have a problem. So that's it. It's also a good thing just to pull, pull back this because when you're doing brakes you can sometimes move this, this dust guard and it can rub on your brakes and make a horrible noise. Next thing you want to do is once you've done the other side, it's very important to do the other side, you have to do, I can't even begin to say how important it is to do both sides. You're going to have to pump the brake pedal a few times because you push the piston back so you're going to have no brake pedal. So before you set off turn the engine on, pump, well even before you turn the engine on, sorry, pump the brake pedal until it goes hard. Once it goes hard, turn your engine on then. At least then you'll have brakes. Now, once you've done brakes, they will feel a bit spongy at first, but that's okay. That's just, the, they're bedding in. So don't really be worried about that. If you change all four brakes, you know, front and back, you might feel the pedal to be quite spongy and think, oh, I haven't got any brakes, but you do. It just takes a while to actually bed in. So that's the, uh, front pads and discs. We're now going to do the track rod end. So I've turned the wheel out as much as I can to make it easier for myself. Let's move the camera up. Electric motor. There we go. That's not me making that noise at all. Fancy camera. Fancy camera. Pokey pokey. You can now see the track rod end. And it looks like this. Now, this is a track line where the steering rack is higher up. On a lot of cars, it's, it's, it's down below, it's about here. So they have a slightly different way of connecting them. They have a bolt. Now, some cars do this as well, but most cars, they have the bolt on the bar here. So the bar goes in, and my finger is, and the bolt, the locking bolt goes here. Where on this one, the locking bolt, as you squeeze it in, it pushes this together which basically locks the bar in place there. Same way of adjusting it. Now what I'm going to show you on here, there's no point me showing you me tracking it because obviously I've got a tracking machine and no, not everyone doing this at home is going to have a tracking machine. So I'm going to show you a way of getting it pretty close without using the tracking machine and then you can go down to your local garage and they can track it for you. It just, it saves you, because if, if they have to put this in, it just, it just saves you money, that's all. I would definitely 100% after you do this get it tracked, even if you think you're steering really straight and you're driving down or anything, oh this is great, it's, it's going to be off and you're going to destroy your front tyres. This will just allow you to get to the place, you've saved the money on doing all the parts yourself, so you're just going to have to give them a few quid to track it. Um, so I'm going to show you the way of just basically getting down there to them. What we need to do first is we need to get a load of WD-40 and a wire brush and I'm going to 
um, wire brush all the connections here, all the bolts, soaking with WD-40, we'll turn the camera back on then and hopefully we can get these out, no problems. Fingers crossed. Okay, so the easiest way to do it, the metal bar is coming into the track rod end, so just imagine this is our metal bar, and that's a threaded metal bar which obviously screws into the track rod end, which allows the track rod end to move in and out depending on how you want your wheels set. Now this one's slightly different setup, has the, the metal bar is split into two, and as you crank the middle bolt, it spreads it out. Basically the same, just a diff slightly different setup, but the same on most cars. So what you want to do is, you want to count the number of threads sticking flush from the end of the track rod end to basically where the threads stop. So on this one, there is about, I know it doesn't really look, but there's maybe about two inches of thread. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to count the number of threads, and let's just say it's ten. So as I screw the old one out, I'm going to screw this one into this ten threads left. That means I know I've got it fairly close to the original marks. It's not going to be 100%, like I said, it isn't going to be 100%, so don't fool yourself. You want to get it tracked properly. But at least this way, you'll be able to go to somewhere, get it tracked, Bob's your uncle. So I'm just going to let the old uh, WD-40 soak in for a little bit more before we attempt to undo this. Now, an air gun really is the quickest way of taking one of these off. Uh, it doesn't always work, because what can happen is the actual whole unit can spin. And if it spins, you have to put an Allen key in the bottom or cut it off. Anyway, it can be a nightmare, but the, an air gun, 90% or 99% of the time, is quick enough and fast enough to shock it off. <laughs> Just right there. Now, believe me, that saves so much time. Because what can happen is, if you do it with a normal ratchet, I mean, don't get it wrong, it'll work with a normal ratchet, but if this here starts spinning, you have to put an Allen key or a torque in the end, depending on which one in, and just spin it out, or just cut it off. Because you have to change it anyway, so it makes no odds if you cut it off. Now, the easiest way to separate this from here is go to hammer and hit on the side. See, it lifts out very handy. Now, it's completely gone. What might be, I can't really show you, sometimes you can count the, um, the little uh, threads easy when you disconnect this part. But on this one, unfortunately, it's made no difference. So I'm just going to get in here and count it. And we have one, two, three. Five, six, seven, eight. Eight threads. You can mark it with tip X as well if you want, it doesn't really matter as long as you kind of get it in and around the, the same place. So I'm just going to double check that now so I know. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, eight threads. The 13mm bolt. Not on bolt that I was showing you, which is this fella here now. I'm going to undo that, which will release the lock from the threaded bar. Hopefully, that's the plan. Now, that's come off nice and handy, but it still doesn't mean this neck bit's going to come off. Now, we also have a, a bolt on the actual track rod end, or the, the inner tie rod, you could say, on this. Leave that there, because you, you don't want to move this whole thing, so just leave that there. Hopefully, this will spin off. And as we can see, it isn't. Which is a bit of a nightmare, but one I was expecting. So, we've a couple of ways now of doing it, and I can't see what I'm looking for. Might be lucky and be able to get a spanner and move it around, which I can do. But that's going to be very, very tight. Uh, they're just awkward. 
they really are. You can get a vice grip in there and spin it. But what happens is, if the thread sticks out this end here, all crap and all crud gets in this line here. You see that the, the, the little line there that squeezes in. All crap and crud gets in there and just makes it difficult. So it's just a thing where we're just going to have to, unfortunately, just keep trying to turn it. You can try and open up this little hole or this little crack, put a screwdriver in or something, but the screwdriver normally gets in the way. So unfortunately, it's just one of them things where it can be loose, it can come out in seconds, or it could take you hours to take this thing out. Hopefully it won't take me hours, but there's no point me showing you it. I'm just going to use vice grips, spanners, I'm just going to keep trying to turn it and eventually, hopefully turn it off. Once I have it off, we'll uh, turn the camera back on. It's off! A lot of swearing and throwing things, uh, it's finally off. As we can see, now there is, or there was, a little bit of rubber. I know that, but just completely and utterly loose inside itself and completely and utterly shocked compared to this one, which you can't, I mean, you can move it, but you know, it's, it's a lot tighter. So, it only took me about four million hours to get it off. Let's see if I can bring you in closer to show you these threads. Now, I don't know if I'm able to show you the old threads where we're looking. Get up. Now, we can see the threads here. Now this one's unusual because it's fed into another bar. Normally they're not like this. They are on, on most Jeeps though, but on cars they're not. So these are the threads. These are the threads at the back I counted. And you can actually see the clean threads compared to the ones that got all the oil and WD-40 and stuff on. So that's basically it. That's what I'm going to have to screw back on now. Putting it back on is normally a hell of a lot easier than taking it off. And the scary thing is though, normally the left hand side of the car is the hardest side to do because that's the side that goes in the ditch and gets all the crap and all the crud and shit on it. This was awkward to do so I, I, I hate to think what the other side is going to be like. But anyway, we'll get there. So I'm just going to screw this on. So I'm just going to screw it on until I'm at my right point, which is my eight threads. threads there so we, we're more or less within reason to where we were Ow. so we're more or less within reason to where we were before we started so simple now now you have to be careful because these where are we looking now the little bolt that goes through it you know you do have to tighten hard but you have to be careful because it will snap so you have to be careful with it. It's just, you'll kind of know when you're doing it yourself. That really can hurt that. So I'm going to squeeze that up and I'm going to put the new bolt on. I'm obviously going to do the same on the far side because you have to. I can't stress how important it is to just, to, you know, for the sake of they're not that expensive now on certain cars the jeeps and stuff they are a bit more expensive than than they are in cars and stuff but you know there's no point two months later the other one going do you know it's actually cheaper to get it all done at once spend a day at it you're sorted so i'm just going to tighten this bolt again i'm going to tighten this one by hand because it shouldn't spin it's a new one and i don't trust an angle i'm going to tighten that by hand and then do the fast and I'm going to track it. So I'm going to leave it here for this video and I hope it helps. Thumbs up and subscribe and don't forget to get your hands dirty to see you for the next one. Ow. Look, look at that.
Look at that. Look, look, look. See that? Ow. Oh.